We are here at CES in Las Vegas with Wei Li, Vice President and General Manager of AI and Analytics from Intel. Wei Li, how's the event been going for you so far? Oh, it's great. It's a, it's a great event here. Yes, and I'm really excited to hear about all of the AI innovations that Intel is up to. What are you most excited about? Yeah, so um, talking about innovation, that's my favorite topic. And we've been doing a lot with Intel uh, on innovation. As you can imagine, uh, within AI, uh, the field really moves very, very fast. And if you cannot innovate, you just get left behind. Uh, so we're doing a lot of things. And we, we, if you look at the uh, entire stack of, of AI, you know, we, all the way from hardware to software to, to machine learning models, and we innovate uh, every, every, everywhere. Uh, and uh, so it is pretty exciting uh, to see uh, the field, where the field is going, and pretty exciting to see where Intel is going. So let me just give you a little bit more examples of, of that. So, so if you look at the, the, the hardware side, uh, we have uh, quite a few product lines, and we have innovation on each of those. And if you go all the way from the uh, general purpose CPU on one end, um, we have been adding AI acceleration into the hardware for, for, for on, the, on the CPU side. And then you go to the other end, we have uh, special purpose uh, AI accelerators and uh, you know Gaudi, Gaudi 2, Gaudi 3. So, so these are really designed for AI only. And then you have something in between, which is a GPU. So we can work on GPU as well for, for not only AI, but also uh, high performance computing. So the innovation really in many different, different areas here. Thank you, and you know, everywhere I look, I see from Intel, AI everywhere. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on, you know, how is Intel actually helping democratize AI and put AI into everyday use technology? Yeah, that's a, that's a uh, great question. So, so Intel is a big company. We, we, we have scale. <laughs> so our, our silicon, our hardware is everywhere already. Now, in order to make AI everywhere, and we actually software plays a key role to make that happen. And when people start to develop AI solutions for different scenarios, and you, you know, we're not only looking at the researchers in AI anymore. We're looking at uh, uh, people who are domain experts in what they do. It could be healthcare, it could be financial industry, it could be wherever uh, they happen to be. So they are, they are, they are experts in, in the, their own domain, but they want to find a way to develop AI solutions. So that's where, where software comes in. So software can bridge the gap between the underlying complex set of uh, capabilities in, in terms of infrastructure and create a ease of use platform for people to develop uh, solutions here. And so we've been doing quite a bit of in, in, that, in, 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 that, in the software area. And, and the one thing which is super important for Intel is because we want to achieve scale. So open ecosystem is uh, critical for us. And, and you know, in order to get to scale, we cannot do that alone. Even we are a big company, we cannot do that alone. So we really need to work with the entire ecosystem. So my team specifically, we've been working with a lot of partners uh, to, to make sure the ecosystem is healthy, vibrant, and moving fast, and make sure people can access to the ecosystem. So we've been looking at uh, quite a few uh, uh, partners, all the way from you know the, the uh, uh, Meta, Google, and to Hugging Face. And, uh, and talking about Hugging Face, they are really very big on large language, language models, and particularly for generative AI, yeah. you know, large language models becoming the, the hottest thing today, right? And uh, so we've been heavily, wor you know, closely working with, with Hugging Face, and most recently, uh, because of the way uh, we take a, a uh, open source model from Hugging Face, and we fine tune it, and then we actually uh, uh, achieve the number one spot on the leaderboard for seven billion uh, large language model, seven billion parameter large language models. So, so it is it is very exciting to see how we can move, you know, quickly together with the ecosystem. Well, first of all, congratulations on that. That that's great, and I know Intel is achieving all sorts of, of awards, but I think especially that right now is very relevant. And you mentioned partners, so I do want to talk a bit about PyTorch. Now, I, I saw that you recently joined the PyTorch Foundation as a board member. So I wanted to ask, what does that collaboration, like how does that actually help your customers or people in general? Yeah, so, so uh, PyTorch is, uh, is critical. Uh, as we know, uh, the, the ecosystem has moved uh, along uh, uh, you know, uh, very quickly, changed very quickly. So PyTorch has become you could argue the, the number one framework in, in particular for large language models. So Intel, and particularly my team, we have been a 
a uh, top three contributor to the PyTorch ecosystem. So we've been doing a lot for PyTorch, and uh, uh, so we have uh, become the uh, the lead for the entire PyTorch uh, ecosystem for for CPU specifically, because we've been historically working on CPU for a long time, and and uh, um, uh, so so you know we have we joined PyTorch. Uh, as a premium member, and, and uh, uh, as, as a result, I'm actually sitting on the governing board for PyTorch Foundation. And it's good to see PyTorch is becoming a real community uh, project. And many of us, you know, quite a few uh, key companies are sitting on the board, and we try to help PyTorch to even go further, because it's been doing great already, right? So we've been working with the, the key maintainers, you know, the, the inventors of PyTorch, and, and all, all the technical people, and we want to make sure uh, uh, you know, we help PyTorch to go, go, go even further over there. So there's a lot of innovation going on in, in the PyTorch uh, community, and we've been helping some of the, from engineering side as well. So in the, as you know, PyTorch evolved from uh, uh, 1.0 to uh, 2.0, and there's quite a few new features added to PyTorch, and uh, it is uh, uh, looking very different uh, today. Wait, you're actually speaking at CES on a panel, and you're talking about bringing limitless potential of AI everywhere. I'd love to hear some of the highlights. So, uh, so I'm part of the the keynote uh, together with my colleague uh, uh, Lisa Spellman uh, for for a for a keynote called uh, uh, Great Minds, and uh, so the the main thing there is AI everywhere. Uh, as, as so we want to get to what you're feeling today. Really, you know, you 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 benefit from AI without knowing AI is, is uh, inside, right? I mean, that's where, that's where we, we see AI is everywhere uh, already. So we'll be talking about how Intel is helping to get to uh, AI everywhere. So my part uh, is uh, mainly on the AI software side of it. So we've, I'll be talking about the software e ecosystem and, and, and all that, uh, uh, and the ones we just discussed a little bit uh, earlier. And, and then the other thing I, I was going to um, do is a demo. It would be a cool, very cool demo. Uh, the demo would be about uh, uh, co-pilot. Uh, uh, how do you generate the code automatically? You know, from from AI, right? And and, and now co-pilot is not necessarily a new concept, but what's new? So I'm giving you a preview here uh, on on the demo here. What's new is underlying the the, uh, uh, the 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 infrastructure we've been we, the solution we have built we have we're running on a variety of hardware over there in the seamlessly seamless fashion so so some of the some of the the the, uh, the, the, the runtime is actually on Gaudi the special accelerator and some of the uh, runtime uh, work is done on the AIPC side and, and some of the work is actually done on the Xeon side so as you can see from CPU uh, to accelerator on the server to the to the AIPC on the client side, we're able to use all of the uh, all of these hardware uh, together here. And, and uh, talking about um, Gaudi specifically, uh, we we are very proud about the Gaudi performance. Uh, and uh, you know the the work we, we we do on top of Gaudi, you can see the response time is very very fast. And this is interesting. Also, uh, one of our partners talking about partners, uh, Databricks. You must you know, your audience must know Databricks. And Databricks uh, released a blog recently, uh, and, and they evaluate Gaudi using their large language models. And what they find out uh, was uh, uh, Gaudi is the best in terms of training and inference when you, when you look at performance per dollar, uh, performance per dollar. Okay. So, so this is pretty amazing to see, to see you know, we have uh, accelerators which is very uh, competitive over there. Uh. Amazing, and you know what, what you said when you just started answering this question was you want people to use AI without knowing they're using AI. And I think I might have heard this in one of Pat's keynotes or sessions on YouTube where he was saying we all use the weather app. We don't all have to build the weather app, right? Yeah. So I think that's, that's, that's sort of where we're going. Um, but my final question to you is, do you have a crystal ball in your pocket <laughs> somewhere? We I need to, <laughs> we want to look to the future and look into our crystal balls. I think everyone wants to know what's happening. I think this is the main year where most people have no clue what to expect because the changes are happening so rapidly. But what can we expect, at least from Intel and AI? Yeah, exactly. I wish I had a uh, crystal ball to tell you in three years, you know, this will happen because quite often, or three months it will happen because, but things just move so so quickly here, right? Um, but I would say along the line of AI everywhere, directionally AI everywhere is a 
is you know it's going to happen actually. You know, so we want to make it ha help make it happen here. And if you look at from the from the both the hardware and software side, so we have a pretty strong roadmap on the hardware side. You know the things I mentioned a little bit earlier in terms of both the CPU side with more AI inside as well as the accelerator side. We we we're, we're doing I think we we're, we're doing more on the special AI accelerator in the form of. GPU or you know and a special acceleration for AI uh, over there, right? So we're doing a little bit more over there. Actually, even in that direction, uh, we've been looking at a lot of the cutting edge stuff. You know, it's like uh, Argonne National Lab. We've been working with them. They're, they're building a huge supercomputer, right? It's going to be 60,000 GPUs on it, and then we're looking at uh, you know training a one trillion parameter model for science. And so, so you're talking about pushing the boundary of of, uh, of AI as well as science uh, over there. So, so this it's going to be exciting to see uh, the, the big things we're we're working on there. Now, the other thing I want to mention here along the line of AI everywhere is you want to reach different type of people here. So, so, so in, you know, in addition to the largest model possible, we all we also are looking into can we get the smaller models to be effective, uh, because not everybody can afford. A supercomputer, right? I mean, I don't have a supercomputer. You know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure you have a supercomputer, right? So, so how do we? How do you get everyone to leverage AI? So now, now, now we're looking at the smaller models. I mean, today's smaller model will be seven billion, thirteen billion, thirty billion. You know, maybe tomorrow the smaller model will be a little bit bigger, also maybe hundred billion. But, but it's not going to be a trillion uh, parameter kind of models. So, can you make these things work uh, uh, fast? On, on, the, on the variety of devices you have here. And as, again, software plays a key role here. Can software help people to get to a place where you can not only develop solutions easily, but also you can, these solutions can be very effective, can run very well on the all kinds of things you, you may happen to have. I mean, you have a PC, you have a laptop, yeah. and can laptop run all kinds of things, right? You may have a phone, can your phone run all kinds of things, right? You may have some edge device in different places. So, so there's a huge, Really, there's a lot of exciting uh, uh, opportunities uh, for going forward here. Well, thank you so much, Wei. I think the most important thing you said, the partners are the way to scale, but also you just mentioned that you know, you're not focused on just the big, what is it, three trillion? One trillion. One trillion. Okay, maybe three trillion still <laughs> when, we talk, when we talk next time. <laughs> That's still a lot. <laughs> That's a, um, but I think focusing in on this, the smaller sort of ideas and concepts and helping everybody grow yeah. with AI is so important. So thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. Again, this is Kate from Dedicated at CES.